Hey guys, welcome back to The Poor Investor. Today I have a new, a kind of different setup, right? I actually wanted to go do a product review on these two CPU coolers that I picked up. Now they're not the most expensive, they're not the most fanciest ones, but it does have RGB lights and you can actually control them. Now these fans, now this is the Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition by Coolmaster. Now the reason why I purchased this was because I wanted to see budget friendly how effective this would be cooling the Ryzen 9 5900X compared to the stock AMD cooler, fan cooler. Now this obviously does not have two fans, it's a single fan option, but it does come with brackets to actually install a second fan if you choose to. And the reason why I picked these up, and I know in my, my other video I was going to get uh, a more expensive CPU fan cooler, but I opted to get this and I wanted to give it a shot. This has been one of the industry known Cooler Master fans that were very popular a few years back. So let's see if it can withhold today's standards of the Ryzen 9 5900X. So first things first, we're gonna pop open one of these bad boys and see what's in here. So we got the brackets here and there is a RGB controller. Now, let's see how this guy looks. Check it out, guys. This thing is pretty big. I mean, it's like the size of my fist. If you want to compare it, it's actually bigger. I thought it was, I actually didn't think it was this big in pictures, it didn't look this big. So that's pretty good. Sticker is still here. Make sure you peel this off when you install it. Definitely will look more effective than what my current CPU cooler looks like right now. And of course, you, you guys make sure to utilize these in any high moisture areas or even throw it in the PC bottom. Like, you know, just let it sit there so it absorbs the moisture. You don't want your machines to gather too much moisture. All right, so that's pretty much it as far as the parts for this. Now, I am gonna be comparing what I currently run at full you know, throttle on the CPU in regards to the AMD stock cooler that comes with the AMD chips. I will also do an idle state to see what temperature it sits at. And then we'll also compare Coolmaster to see where it sits at when it's idle and also at full CPU usage when we're mining Raptorium. So here I emptied out all the parts, the screws, the thermal paste and the plastic clips. And of course they have these little black rubber bumpers. I'm not sure what they are for yet, but I'm sure I'll figure it out as soon as we start working on this guy. So I do have the CPU cooler in hand and we're first gonna be installing the bracket. Now I am going to install this on an AM4. So it is for AMD chipset CPU and we're gonna be focused on that. Obviously this is universal for AMD and Intel. So you have that choice. First take this bracket and we're gonna line it up right down here. And of course we're gonna set one of the screws because the holes line up right there. And we're gonna take one of the screws and it only has the two screws that actually for each side. So one on each side and it, it's a flat screw so that way it doesn't stick up. Then we screw it in. Don't have to go too crazy with tightening it. So that's how this bracket looks. I just installed it. Now we're gonna do the other side which is down over this side right here and here. Now that we have the cooler done, let's use the back plate. So it is labeled. Now one side says AMD, okay? And then the other side is for Intel, and it'll tell you that. So the Intel ones are the ones that are the longer ones, and the AMD are the shorter ones because it's actually right underneath where it says AMD, and then it, it identifies it as the shorter one, okay? So what we're gonna do here is put these pins all right, we have these four little pins. They look like little T's, all right? We're gonna take one, and then we're gonna put them through. Now you wanna go through the way where there's a groove. Now, now that you have one of these pegs in there, in the right position, you're gonna take one of these plastic pegs. The grooved out part is where it's gonna meet up with the screw, so it actually gives it room to shift left and right. Now, and the flat part will be on the bottom side with the flat side of the T. So let's do that right now. And then we're gonna do it for all four corners. So I'm just sliding it in until it kind of clicks in there. It's a little difficult, but you just heard that click, right? So there it goes. You can actually now, the screw's in secure, 
and you can actually shift it left and right to get it into position when you have your motherboard. Now we're going to do that three more times. And we can shift it left and right to make sure that it fits our motherboard. And we'll work on the next step now. Now if your motherboard has the existing brackets, make sure to remove that now. Now what you can do, because I just took this off my motherboard, and I can actually just line it up to make sure that they're in the same position. And if not, I can readjust it so it does match. So right now it does not match. So what I'm going to do, the, the bottom, the top two actually match. The bottom two is off. So that indicates that I just need to shift them over like this. And now they should match. And that's like the easiest way to get them underneath without trying to figure out anything else. So now we just put it underneath the motherboard, lay it flat. So this is a great time not to actually have it elevated because it'll just make it a little difficult. What we're gonna do next is take these little nuts and screw them in. Now what you wanna do is take the socket and tighten it a little more. Now I like to use a smaller screwdriver. That way you can't over torque it, meaning you can only leverage so much strength with a little tiny screwdriver and you do not need to make it that tight. Once you get some resistance, that's pretty much it. All right guys, so first things first, to make sure to always remove any existing thermal paste, you do not wanna put or apply any new thermal paste on top of old. I guess something a little harsh. Now this is sort of like a paper towel-ish material. You don't wanna use paper, like facial tissue or anything that would leave any type of fibers on it. This is pretty good. This is just rubbing alcohol 70%. 10 seconds before I apply the thermal paste. So I will be using the Coolmaster thermal paste and they can't say that I'm not utilizing their thermal paste and decide to use another one that I have and say, well, that's your reason for not being cool enough. We're gonna test it. We're gonna make sure that this thermal paste with their cooler, let's see how efficient it really is, okay? So I think that's pretty good right now. There's nothing on it, just make sure of that and we're just gonna squeeze. My theory on this is I've seen a lot of people and a lot of people put crosses, they put little dots everywhere. I believe the P size in the middle, maybe, maybe even slightly a little bit bigger P size, just a little bit more, but not too much because as soon as you set this down, it will spread it all out and it'll flatten out. And I think that's more than enough to, you know, cover the CPU. Make sure to remove the plastic. It does say that, please peel off label before you use it. All right, that's a warning. And then actually tells you where to peel it. Now, I think this looks amazingly nice. There's no grooves in between, it's really flat. I am hoping that this will dispense the heat equally and we'll see how that all plays out. So right now, we're gonna just set it on top. Okay guys, so I did make an honest mistake. I installed the smaller brackets by accident, but what I really do need is the larger brackets for the AM4 CPU. Now we'll be plugging in this fan into the CPU fan socket. It only goes one way because of the grooves. So we'll do that right now. Now because after I installed it, and since I only have one memory chip, that's actually easier. But it seems like there's enough room to actually fill all four slots. It's not blocking, so that's a good thing. So if I ever choose to upgrade and put more memory going forward, that should not be a problem with this cooler. So now what we have to do is power this bad boy up, get my monitor here, run this miner, and see how efficiently this motherboard uh, with this cooler is gonna be compared to what it was originally. And of course, I'll have the comparisons. Now, if you have an older motherboard, you can actually use this, plug it back in to get it to work for the RGB. Now, if your newer motherboard actually has a port four to four pin, you can just plug it in directly. So we'll plug it in directly since my motherboard is a newer type motherboard that has the ability to. All right, guys. So this is the little test bench that I have set up right now. Now this PSU is plugged in right now. And all I need to do is actually start this motherboard. There is power going to it. I just need to grab a little screwdriver and jump start that thing. Get some little B-roll action right here.
So right now with the Coolmaster Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition at idle on Windows 10, it's fluctuating between 38, 30 to 40. It's not really doing anything. Now it's back down to 36. So it's warming up, booted up the machine. I let it sit here idle. Let's see where it sits at. I gave it about five minutes or so. So right now, let's just say it's around 31. At 31 Celsius to Fahrenheit, that's 87.8 degrees. So that's not too bad. I will launch Raptorium, which is the CPU miner. I know some of you guys are gonna cringe and say, why aren't I using XM rig? But it is what it is right now. So let's let this accumulate a little more and we'll watch the temperature rise. We'll see how hot or if it gets hot to the touch at all. We'll let it sit there for a good couple of minutes. As you can see, the temperature is rising. Now I'll also show you a comparison uh, where I had the original AMD cooler sitting at after we get the results of this. All right, guys, let's do a quick comparison. I had the miners run a, uh, about 10, 10 minutes now. CPU usage at 100%. CPU frequency as at 4.3 megahertz. The core temperature, you can see right there, the socket temperature is 63 Celsius and the core temperature is 81 Celsius and the CPU fan is at 100%. Now this is with the AMD stock cooler. Now this is the same configuration, same memory, same motherboard, same CPU, a Ryzen 9 5900X and this is where it's running on the stock, stock AMD cooler. Now this is not overclocked, this is just stock straight through nothing was changed no overclocking so let's go over to the cool master cooler master 212 the hyper 212 rgb black edition now look at that it's at socket temperature 45 degrees celsius uh, cpu core temperature is 64 celsius running cpu usage at 96 percent and the cpu fan is only at 74 percent and this is running at 4.5 megahertz. Just to give you a quick idea of what that looks like over there, it's at 4.4, everything's at 100%, CPU and the fan speed, and it's at 81 Celsius, 81 Celsius. Jumping up to 88, it may even go as high as 90. So in short, I think the Cooler Master is efficient, and of course I have not run it overclocked yet and then I will test that as well but that will be for another video I just wanted to show the difference between the cooler master even at a budget friendly CPU cooler already better than the AMD stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen 7s and the 9s okay so I will do a more extensive test when I overclock them and I will continuously check the CPU temperature and I also may opt to add a second fan just to see how that actually works and if it makes a difference in cooling it. So we'll see. Uh, I want to thank you guys for being here. I do recommend, I am not sponsored, I am nowhere affiliated, but you do not need to spend $100 on a CPU fan. I will post the price on this and I'll link it in my description. I am not affiliated, I am not getting any money from it, but I just recommend it as a budget-friendly CPU cooler for what we're trying to accomplish, which is Raptorium mining. I wanna thank you guys for being here. Please hit that like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again soon, bye.